Oh wait, this is Nemesis. That's Nemesis. Zeros. The dragons even have green blood. Did really Ray really die there? Well, thank you so much. Don't know. I hope she didn't. She needs to tell us. Ah, oh, there we go. Hang in there, Lady Rhea. Get her to her room quickly. That's a serious injury. It's a miracle that she's even alive right now. I'll do what I can, but. Goddess. Please save Lady Rhea. All we can do now is pray. Remember when this place was taken five years ago and a pure white beast appeared on the battlefield? I only caught a glimpse of it, but I didn't understand where it came from. There were rumors that the goddess sent it to protect the monastery. But now I know better. That beast was Rhea. She tried to save me. Did you know Rhea's true identity? Thinking back on it now, I suppose I did. I once showed you a picture of a creature known as the Immaculate One. Sedith confiscated it, saying it must have been one of Tomas's personal possessions. The beast that appeared back then looked just like it. So Rhea is the Immaculate One. The book said that it was a servant of the goddess, but wouldn't it make sense if beasts like that are actually children of the goddess? Rhea is in a grim state right now. It's possible she may not make it, but we have things we must ask her about. Once things calm down a little, let's go and see Rhea. Together, the truth can't be delayed any longer. Part 2. Verdant Wind. Verdant Rain Moon. Fodlan's New Dawn. With the destruction of Shambhala, the ambitions of those who slither in the dark are forever shattered. However, Rhea has suffered grievous injuries in the process. Yet, certain mysteries remain unsolved. So Claude and the others approach Rhea, who is now confined to her room due to her wounds. I almost wish they replaced all these, like, kind of meaningless tutorial things with, like, lore notes and mm -hmm. background details. Because that would be cool if there's, like, a couple hundred of these. Oh, yeah. Wait, we still have a month? Uh... uh I am happy huh? to see you too. Sorry to interrupt your rest. But there are some things that we absolutely must ask you. It seems I do not have much time left. I do not intend to hide anything any longer. Rhea, I have to ask. You're the Immaculate One, aren't you? If what I'm thinking is correct, that's what the Children of the Goddess is referring to. In other words, you... I am the last child of the Progenitor God. A long time ago, the Progenitor God came from somewhere far away and descended upon this continent. She changed her form to resemble that of a human and gave her own blood to birth her children. The progenitor god and her children shared knowledge and skills with the people of the land. Together, they built a prosperous civilization. But the humans turned their backs on the teachings of the progenitor god and engaged in senseless wars. Eventually, people began to think of themselves as gods and challenged the progenitor god herself to battle. The land was scorched in the war that ensued and the majority of humans were annihilated. I believe that those who slither in the dark 
are the descendants of those who retreated beneath the ground during that time. So they had been waiting all that time for their chance at revenge. It took the progenitor god an astonishing amount of time to revive the ravaged world. But eventually, the continent found peace again. And the progenitor god, having fulfilled her duty, fell into a long slumber in the holy tomb. The children who stayed behind built a settlement in Xanado to protect the holy tomb as they quietly lived out their lives. But then, Nemesis appeared bringing tragedy along with him. Even now, I cannot forget the sight of that massive canyon painted red with blood. I was never able to forgive those who proudly wielded weapons crafted from the corpses of my brethren. Mm. I was the only survivor of Xanado, and all I could do was wander across Fodlan, clinging to my desperate desire for revenge. I called myself Seros, fostered the founding of the Empire, and prepared to oppose Nemesis and his followers. Unbelievable. I put Xanado behind me to gather the remaining children who were scattered across Vodlin. Finally, we killed Nemesis on the Teltine Plains, and I took back the Sword of the Creator. L let me get this straight. Saint Seros is you? You're kidding me, right? Professor, Claude, there's something you need to hear right away. If you have something to report, do so at once. There is no need to let my presence worry you. As you wish. We're receiving a constant stream of express messengers from cities to the east. They claim that an unidentified military force is attacking, and that there have already been a large number of casualties. What? The reports indicate that the cities and towns along the East Grander Thoroughfare in the Old Hrim territory have already been destroyed. Some villages were razed completely, leaving no survivors. Damn it! Did they come from Shambhala? Could it be that there were some remnants of that wicked group hiding there? I have a report. The unidentified military force has crossed the Great Bridge of Murden. Alliance forces met them in battle, but it seems they have already broken through. They've already made it so far. Is Count Gloucester unharmed? The Count is fine, but apparently my brother joined with reinforcements and was gravely injured. Do you mean to tell me they easily got past a general as skilled as Holst? They say the enemy general has a weapon that resembles the Sword of the Creator. Even my brother was powerless to stop him. The Sword of the Creator? That's not possible. The enemy forces are flying a banner bearing the Crest of Flames as they continue their march west along the Aramid River. <sighs> we believe they're marching toward Garrig Mark. We are preparing to meet them in battle. A weapon that resembles the Sword of the Creator and banner bearing the Crest of Flames. There is only one explanation. The one leading the enemy force is Nemesis himself. Nemesis? That Nemesis? Do you really think the ancient king of liberation has been brought back to life? Perhaps the seal was broken when Shambhala fell. An incredible power that we children cannot hope to match dwells within the blood of the progenitor god. Nemesis obtained that blood, so it would not surprise me if that were the case. The blood of the progenitor god? That's right. He did take the remains from the holy tomb, didn't he? From the blood of the progenitor god, Sothis, he acquired the Crest of Flames. From her bones and heart, he crafted the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator is made from her bones and heart? The heart of Sothis is the Crest Stone that was placed in the Sword of the Creator. The same is true of the Crests of the Ten Elites and the other Crest Stones. They were born of the blood and hearts of the progenitor god's children. Those who slither in the dark created them, stole them. So this never gifted that power to the humans. The crests of the ten elites, the crest stones, and the hero's relics. I can't believe those who slither in the dark made them all. And after that, 
Nemesis used the sword of the Creator to massacre all of the progenitor god's children in Xanadu. In other words, the citizens of Xanadu were killed by weapons made from the remains of their brethren. How atrocious. But I don't get it. The sword of the Creator that Teach wields doesn't have a crest stone. So how is Teach able to wield its full power? The crest stone of the progenitor god dwells within your professor. <gasps> After I battled with Nemesis as Saint Seros, I reclaimed the heart of Sophus. I wanted to use that heart to... to resurrect her, even though I had to do some... questionable things to achieve that goal. I wished to see Sophus, my mother, once more. Uh... Yeah. So... I was worried about the bones yep. being the weapons. They did look an awful lot like bones. And yeah, the so the, those who slither in the dark, they were the ones that took the stones from the dragons and the blood and everything. Okay, that's so that makes sense. Yep. But the, so if Sothis is Rhea's mother and you're, Kind of a reincarnation of Not Sophus. really. She effectively just took a baby. She just took a baby and put and the heart yeah. in. Chances Ooh. are, we still don't know so much about... So what did Nemesis do? Did he just take Sothis while she was sleeping? Yeah, and probably raided the tomb. And and then just took her blood and bones while... Yeah, just monster hunted her. her into a, a new weapon. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Placed her heart in me? Yes. I believed that if I could resurrect my mother, I could regain all that had been lost. So, that's the truth of it. I suspected that your body housed the consciousness of Sothis. Those suspicions were correct. And yet, she merely gave you her power and vanished. My dearest wish did not come true. But you did inherit the power of the Progenitor God. Now, you must use that power to defeat Nemesis once and for all. Fodlin's blood-stained history must end. How do we have a whole month? Uh the hell I mean we can get through it I don't know why my my stomach has been complaining for the Here, last several shall, hours you want to go get like a small snack because it's going to take me a little bit to manage anyway I'm not even going to explore well I, at this point I don't know if it's hunger or if it's just I mean you haven't had actual real food like meal wise in ages so I'm just oh, that's true. I'm just gonna save. I'm not even gonna explore here. Uh let's see. I'm either gonna rest or seminar. Pretty much the end. Oh wow, everybody can give seminars. That's kind of convenient. I mean I don't wanna hold you up. No no no, you're not gonna hold me up. Go get go get food. I I'm just doing light management. Because if you being hungry is the uh, the main limiting factor, then easy solution. Let us do seminar. Three. Some see that. things you can't. Everybody gains sword always. skills. Guess I Tons need of notice. sword I'm skills. Really getting the heck? Could be useful. Really should have maybe tried that a long time ago, but whatever. I have much expertise now. I'm just not. But yeah, might as well just skip the month. Uh, I could, but like this is gonna work. May I ask a? Question, knit it all for someone don't know what kind of make it. Eagles, lions, loves deer. Uh, let's see. Eagles head, lions body, and a deer's tail. I guess I could do that. 
Oh, she didn't care for the griffin idea. You fool! Professor. Lies. It's a birthday. Come on, Wayla's Thank birthday. You. Have flowers. But no. Shell made us stay up this late for... Uh, for Stranger Things, I can make us stay up ready? kind of this you late for now, Fire Master. Emblem. And accept I am... Let's see. Does Felix even need the crit? Probably not. Can I use this off growth? Still a long. This is making practice. So we'll... Is perhaps I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a battle day. Thanks. No. You keep doing seminars. I could train everybody in sword skills until their heads burst. Let's see. Problem is only a couple of characters want faith training, frustratingly enough. Let's just work on this. Bear the sword of the creator ish. Okay, instruct automatically. Looks like I'm getting it. Characters get skills and things. So, are, th are there any supports available? Professor. Interesting question. I don't really know. Yes, I apologize to all of you that are staying up with us late to finish this. An exceptional result. I don't really know. I don't really know how to feel whether or not, like. I'm necessarily doing this game a disservice by I doing this? it this way. I never... Normally, I I try very hard not to do just like mad dashes for freedom. Let's see. Nope, we do not have any support conversations, which doesn't make it's not a big deal. Okay. But yeah. Time a quick study. Ooh, black magic range. That's helpful. Professor. And no need to apologize me thinks. I just remember back to uh let's see, Leonie's birthday, oh, good flowers. Uh let's see. What was it? Iconoclasts. Very very specifically. I, I stayed up extra extra late for it, and I was kind of grumpy about it because like the end of the game was not the best. How best to use this? It seems my proficient. And I was mad about it, and everybody was giving me like infinite shit for it. And I'm not necessarily sure if I deserved that. Maybe. Mad about what now? The, uh, me being grumpy Dude. about the end of Iconoclast. Claude, your goals have changed for the end of the game. It would be nice if I could have actually taken out all of the, like, kind of days are passing cutscenes. Like, I don't really need that. Just give me a weak that report. Went fine. What were Claude's goals? I've got the gist of oh, it now. Well, may never know. Now is the t can't let this. Don't know if it matters. Last day, seminar for people. Okay, here we go. I think it'd be a newly revised history lesson. Whee. 
Oh, we visited the cemetery. Sorry. It looks like I'm going to have to leave you now. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. Someone I love. Buh? Buh? Wait, so <laughs> obviously not Ingrid, Annette, Petra. <laughs> Mary kind Dorothea, of manic looking so this. Yoni. So either it's Flayne and you keep your little wish promise or you Stay with Sothis forever. In one body. For all eternity. <laughs> I don't know. I do miss Sothis. But at the same time. What is she to you? If she's a sassy. part of you. Uh, Sothis the sassy ghost. I I would either say Flane or Sothis because you're probably I I don't know. Does anyone know which one's cuter? Probably should have I saved recently ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kinda of weird with Sothis. Do you just talk with her in your mind for the rest of your life? Is she gonna be given a new body again? But yeah, there's a lot of fi fish yeah, with we, Flane. Yeah, we went for Flane this time. Well, the thing is, with Flane too, we did at, at that tower a long time ago, you wanted to push forward the be with you forever, as opposed to let us seek happiness. Look, I got a hankering for asparagus. Fish. Okay, fine. Though I do want to see the Sothis ending at some yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, straight up, we can watch any and all of these on YouTube. If we're curious. Like, that's the beauty, beauty part of it. Anyway, we're, we're going to marry the fluff because, I mean, we've been going out of her way to spend time with her this game. But, I, if I do New Game Plus, uh, we'll probably do Sothis. Or we'll just A watch it on YouTube. Force bearing the Crest of Flames on its banner marches west to Garigmach from Shambhala, attacking nearby cities along the way. Rhea informs the Alliance that the enemy's general is none other than the ancient fell king Nemesis. And so the Alliance army prepares for their final battle, hoping to put an end to Fodlin's blood-stained history. What's the plan, my friend? We will defeat Nemesis. I thought you'd say that. And of course, I'll be joining you. What about the rest of you? Our enemy is a monster of legend. As always, there's not a shred of proof that we can win. A foolish inquiry, Claude. I must finish what my father started. Started? Your father ran away before the battle even began. I... Well... All the more reason why I, as his heir, cannot flee now. I'm in. I need to get back at him for hurting my brother. I'm not going to let him get away with it. Wow. Hilda's serious about this. I, too, will fight until the end. I wish to protect Foldland's future. I feel the same as Lysithia. It would hardly be fitting for Captain Gerald's apprentice to bow out now. I'll show them everything he taught me. I... I will give it my all as well. For the Professor, for Claude, and for all of you who helped make me as strong as I am now. I'm in too. And when we're done, I'm gonna eat tons of steak to celebrate. This truly is the final battle. At this point, you shouldn't have to ask us, Claude. You know we're with you. 
I do know that, Ignatz. But I had to ask, just to make sure. <laughs> Look at how reliable you kids have become. You've trained them well, Professor. This nemesis guy should be arriving soon. Is everyone ready? It's finally time. Let's win this together. Yeah, <laughs> moving my mic around. Wonder why are you? You're That's all right. over the place. I'm confident we have what it takes to win. Let's defeat this dusty old king of liberation and put an end to this history of lies. Once we've done that, there'll be nothing holding us back. A new and brighter age will begin. Let's go, my friend. Fodlin's new dawn awaits. Yeah, I, Thanks. uh, usually around four in the morning, three in the morning, really, I start sweating uncontrollably. Thank you. It's just life for me, I guess. And so I've been I trying to, great. like, just kind of grin and bear it and, like, hopefully finish the game by, like, three. And then, uh, yeah, Thanks. no, it didn't. So now I gotta stand up so I don't, like, die. Thank you very oh. much. Luckily, I will not have to do this wow, again for thanks. a while. Okay. So, map. What are we looking at? So, they've got Freikugel Fry Alpha. Moonin Alpha. Yeah, so they've got the... Uh, they big, have the Alpha weapons. Yeah, the Dark Thunderbrand. The Dark Creator Sword. Ooh, he's level 60. Shit. Means I'm gonna have to try on this one. Uh, let's see, units. Okay. Get out of here, Ash. I need people with a little bit more durability. Oh, hey, you can have 12 this time around. Cool. That'll be kind of helpful. Uh, let's see. We're gonna need healers. I still feel bad that we didn't romance Othis. Eh. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can go back and do that at a point. Mm hmm. But yeah, Professor X was obsessed with fish and did make the wish at the tower with Blaine. Grab Sylvain. Oh, am I actually maxed out here? Is this the group? Gru and then you'd have with? Sedeth as a father-in-law. Yep. If you think about it though, if he were to end up with Sothis, wouldn't that mean you would... I, I think she would just laugh at you. I don't know. It'd be awkward for anyone else who's descended from a dragon, too. Because you would be by far the youngest of their number. go through and find out if there's anything else that I can load up and grab, move around, and so on and so forth. Look like it. Axe of Zoltan. Use an axe. Well, Sedith has his... <laughs> Look at his lance. Oh, wait, no, there it is. <laughs> yeah, he can't use his own spear. People are bringing up that if we were to romance Sothis, if it can be even called romancing Sothis, then we'd be Rhea's uh, father-ish stepfather. I'm thoroughly amused by that. But that would be weird, though. Oh, first off, they said that Sothis made the dragon people of her blood. Does, that might not necessarily mean she gave birth to them. She could have just created them somehow? Maybe amongst these odd alien lizard creatures, it's 
a budding process? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she could have just used her blood to spawn them. Mm-hmm. Blood's got to cut us. Maybe. We do not need the knowledge gem anymore. It's a little late for that. Uh, let's see. Got that I can give to you. X here. Asian. Yeah, Plane's one of them, but when Sothis created the dragon people, was it really only Saros, the four saints, and then the ten? Or were there was there a more substantial dragon society? They haven't really elucidated on that. Because there could have been several generations of dragons. Nemesis is here, and with more soldiers than expected. A swamp, huh? But there's something about it. It looks odd somehow. <laughs> Can't breathe. You should not have done that. Be careful. The water is poisonous to the living. It looks like we better not get near that swamp. Try to avoid it during the fight. Oh, there's a whole bunch of chests on this map. This is a really cool segment right here. This the music. This is a cool segment. Okay. So, age-old strategy. Leave it to battle brick. Uh -huh. Let's make this quick. <laughs> Shall we? I'll crush them all. More fighting. You can be these two, these two. That seems like a candidate. Onward. Okay. I believe in the battle brick. Saros, I will kill you. Do not get in my way. So that's Nemesis. You're a crusty old bastard, you know that? All those who stand in my way will be destroyed. Uh, watch out, Claude. They're coming for us. Oh. oh, that's Blathed. Huh? I think they've got some sort of magical link with Nemesis. Not sure, but we'd better take out his ten commanders before taking him on. Guess I have no I can go. Don't get used to this. <laughs> I'm still using my training gauntlets. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, good. They've got ballista. Oh. Might not be an issue, though. Is that all? Whoa, those are quite the flips. Yep. I'll never back she's down. Got, she's got some neat tricks. Anyway, uh, let's see. What's my strategy? I can kind of hurt him. He can't hurt me back. Watch and learn. And that's interesting. The guy is just called Bladed. Uh, Bladed. Yeah. But he's probably based on the original. Mm-hmm. Unless... 
all of these guys Sorry, were kept in the coffins. Oh, like the original. Well, yeah, the that's a good point because the leaders. the ten heroes weren't necessarily good people. Mm -mm. And they vanished, except for the one must have turned into the beast to have been the beast one. Yeah, because we never actually saw anything uh, from. Nine more commanders remaining. We just killed number ten. These can't be the ten elites, can they? Nah, not likely. <laughs> well, they seem to have been kept in cryostasis all this time. I mean, didn't... Didn't those Agarthans say, you know, watch out for the swamp. You know, the living will, yeah, will we, perish in it. Did we establish exactly who the Agarthans are? The Agarthans are the original people that okay. rebelled against Saros, and they went underground and okay. had a society for a thousand I, I years seeking revenge. I as much. Revenge. It was just like he suddenly name-dropped it as though I'd, I was supposed to have heard it before, and I was kind of confused. Yeah. Remember, all texts about them had been erased from the library. True. They've been erased from the archives. Only oh. thorns left on this road. You're relentless. I'll cut through. Damn it. You forced that guy. My hand. <laughs> Though after Nemesis was stabbed to death, how was he taken away and put in a coffin? I mean, those who slither in the dark slither a lot. <laughs> They're busy little puppers. Because if I were Saros, I would have burned. Out of burned that body. Yeah, I would have had a massive funeral pyre and burned a lot of them. Yeah. Now, Destiny if you can, yeah, can you have a descendant face their progenitor? Uh, yeah, possibly. So if you find Regan, or if you find... Because we don't have one for Bladed, but and you already killed them. But Freikagul... That's just an Argarthan soldier, and that's just a demonic beast. Seem like he's charging me anymore. A lot of people on oh, these. Oh, oh, oh! So that's holds. staff now. Okay, what about that one down there? This? That Goneril. Oh yeah. yes. So that you're going to have to face with Hilda. I just want to see. Might as well. Oh, but don't. You can't go in the water though. Oh no, I can. It just hurts. I just lose ten percent of my HP. Who's every that? Time. Standing in front this of you. This guy. That's oh, just an ancient soldier. Yeah. Gonna start moving a little bit. You defeat me. Yeah, bladed was Demetrius, which is why we could never use it. Let's see. My orders. Let's see. We might as well start punching down some of these things on the side. Because I just want to see if there's unique dialogue for if you attack with the opposing weapon, but then also the descendant. Hmm. Who's that? Here? No one. Just okay, an ancient just an ancient soldier, alright. There's no turning back now. I could go. She can heal herself, so she can go through the poison. What we'll probably want to do for the most part is just bait them out. Hmm. You probably don't have representatives of the majority of the houses out here. You probably left many of them behind. Uh, 
Uh, probably. Because I mean, with Lysithia, you could use the... We'll see with Hilda. That's that's the yeah, first step. Yeah, we'll see with Hilda first. Because Hilda, Hilda is the closest. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Really? Maybe that's because he attacked you, or nah? No. I really hope that there'd be... Yeah, there's Gloucester. Yeah, you would think. So close. Cool. The greatest question. For us. So weaken him a little bit so that then she can finish him off. Yep. I guess we'll get him with Raikou. You're making me work. Okay. Well, I guess I didn't need to do that anyway. I still have a long. Yeah. So apparently, this is alluded to when you fight the much. Windcaller with Claude. Because that big griffin dude. Descendants of my enemies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good spot. It was interesting because right I had always here. assumed that it was either humans had been blessed and they carried those blessings through the generations or that there were specific dragons that had their blood intermingled with humans and then it went through... And it's true, the dragon blood is intermingled with the humans, it was just taken from them as opposed to mm -hmm. having a union between humans and dragons. Yeah, I think Flayne might be the only... Oh! Do you think she's half dragon? Yep. Hmm. That's my assumption. I mean, Sedeth seemed to say that he failed to protect her mother. I don't know if that means she was another dragon in that insurrection, or if she was uh, a human that was caught in the fray. What a high hit is it? It's about a hit chance. I won't allow it. Will do. Now these assassin type characters are probably some of the more dangerous that I have to contend with. Definitely reminds me of Dragonheart 2 when there was that villain that had stolen a mummified dragon heart from a Chinese dragon and actually cut a hole in his chest so that he could have the heart forcibly bonded with him. That's freaky. Except he put the entirety of the heart in there. So he became a dragon and fought the main protagonist dragon. Still freaky. <laughs> but like we discussed before, the the premise of Dragonheart was a dragon sure. can bond with the human by giving them a piece of their heart, but it would mean that should one die, then the other does. Though I think specifically the human has the quote unquote better end of the deal. Will this ever end? They can suffer terrible wounds and it's the dragon that feels pain. <laughs> But because the dragon has such a more powerful, like, because they're so powerful life force, the human can re regenerate, pretty much. Whereas it's really, if the dragon is killed, that's the only way that the human can be. So I just find it interesting that this is the whole humans trying to empower themselves with dragon parts. 
Zenith is just getting bodied here. And it doesn't matter. He's just tanking it like a champion. And yeah, people are asking our Dragonstone's hearts. Uh, I find that often in fantasy media, when people slay dragons, there is a heart that is a crystal that they pull out of them. Um, I'm specifically thinking of Escaflone. In Escaflone, the dragons have crystals in inside them. I don't know if they're their heart or if they're just a magical they're essence, still... but they're often referred to as the hearts of the dragons, and then people take them and use them to power Gymelifs and such. Gymelifs being giant mecha in Escaflone. So, uh, I... Typically, I, I've always associated dragon hearts with stone. Though in in the dragon heart films, the, the hearts were just glowing light. You did never really saw them. You assumed that they were flesh and blood, but there was always light associated with it. But I believe these crest stones are potentially the hearts because that would explain why the sort of the creator's crust is missing. It's because that crust was used as the right, heart and placed inside your character. Correct? Now we can't call any more demonic beasts. Time to see oh, all these allies. I like this song. My moment Ooh, has arrived. 68% chance of crit. That's pretty killed. good. Have Lord Daphne. You know, that's Thunderbrand him in the bullet. But yeah, no special dialogue. Sadly, mm -hmm. that would have been cool. I fight for what. Yeah. So the. The swamp is a bit of an inconvenience. Wow, he guarded that. It didn't matter. Oh, Raphael. Let's see. I keep just rescuing Hilda upwards, but she can actually participate. There we go. Now, Fortify, but that'd be excessive. Having discovered the true nature of the crests and the weapons, what do you think will be the outcome that Sothis and the other dragon people would want? Would they want the weapons to be destroyed forever? Would they want Probably. the crests to be removed? Or... I mean, if Hammond can figure out a way to remove the crest, then that would remove the dragon taint. And it's not even that the dragons tainted them, it's that they were used against their will. Oh, cleared. Oh, well, that's convenient. Oh, nice. Comes out doing Mad Dash Bum Rush actually works out stinking well. Physic. Oh, Physicker. There we go. But yeah, I know... Uh, I know the Black Eagle plotline. Oh, Aravindra. Oh. oh, Freldarius. Yep. That's Felix's line. Dominic. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I know of a Dominic. Dominic. Maybe not from our house, but maybe from. Oh, do you think that would be like Dudu? No, Dudu is from Dusker. Yeah. I don't know. I am unsure. I don't recognize the Dominic name. This could turn the tides. Oh, Dominic is a net, they say? I suppose we never looked into a net, and we, we never, never really interacted with her that much. Well, also, maybe you would only be able to find Dominic's weapon by 
getting Gilbert and Maybe. his house in order, which would have required a playthrough of the Blue Lions. Still using training axes. I was like, I'm gonna bring up the good stuff, and it's like, oh wait, I straight up don't need it. Could you imagine that these royal families lasted a thousand years? Uh, and they kept their name the entire time. I don't know if I've ever heard of a monarchy that's lasted over a thousand years where the name has been kept. You know, it, too. it probably is one of those where it matters more in this universe. Like here, the names would kind of switch around. Oh, in our world, names kind of switch around a little bit because... Mm -hmm. Like, uh, amongst the British, for instance, you had the Plantagenets, you had the Yorks, you had the Tudors. Yeah. There were several people took up the title but it's not like you have this like crest thing that is the world. source of your your lineage and your your lineage is mm -hmm. our effectively because yeah. i'm pretty sure people would be a lot more inclined to keep their family name well, maybe if, it's because in this world, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. Yeah. You carry on the line of your house. Which begs the question, if, say, Hilda had actually gotten married to Lorenz, and their child had the Goneril crest rather than the Gloucester crest, what would have happened to... I don't know. It still seems like the world is vaguely patriarchal. Patriarchal? Mm-hmm. At the same time, they made Edelgard Emperor, not Empress. Empress. Yeah, so maybe it doesn't matter so much. Mm -hmm. We are just clearing this map. Gautier. I was assuming this would actually be hard, but it looks like my massive amounts of preparation like half a game ago is still paying off mad dividends. That's another one. I haven't checked, except for, for Watch and learn. except for Nemesis. I don't yeah. actually know what level all of these enemies this are. Could turn the tides. Mm -hmm. There is. Be too late to check. All is going to plan. I'm getting mad cat levels here, sort of. <laughs> okay, good. At least there will be a survivor for me to check the average level here. I think I already killed off all the house leaders. Not yet. He still has the shielding. He's still alive. This guy. Not nah, ancient soldier. Ancient soldier. Let's see. Oh, this guy. Got Gautier. Gautier. Yeah. Nope. Ain't gonna help him too much. Not against Captain Punch. Wow. Plus 20 avoidance. Yep, there go the shields. It took some doing, but now is our chance to face off against Nemesis. Let's see. Another chest in the she? No, not anymore. It didn't seem like it was particularly amazing anyway. Good question. How does Leone handle him? The answer is not well. No. She can probably take out that guy. But maybe you really do need the main protagonist or someone with a an ancient weapon. Or somebody that's just sufficiently oofed up. I won't allow it. Because Leone does decent damage, but she ain't no clawed. Yeah, 
Yeah, Claude's got a reasonable shot at fighting this guy. I think he's got counterattack. Uh yeah. Miss. Hold the grudge if you oh. Yep. It's not enough. The weak. F I'm hurt, but I'm with you. Fortify. That'll keep them up. Oh, there's your ring character. Yep. My one fear is that he kills himself on Claude. Well, can't you get the main the main characters too far away? Oh, you already moved him. Oh no, not killing himself on Claude. Also, Nemesis for he healed. Yeah, because he was on a stronghold tile. Yeah. Okay, didn't kill himself on Claude. That close. Oh, and that guy's healing him up. I must leave them well. Here we go. I want this dialogue. Mm-hmm. Attack. Lime Creator Sword. Creator Sword versus Creator Sword. Who will win? <laughs> Super damn obvious, actually. What do I use? Do I have anything? Oh, yeah. Sublime Heaven? That's a good shot. That sword. You bear the crest of flames just as I do. Yeah. I think... Have I ever used this move before? No idea. No, we've never have. Well... Right, because it has a huge durability loss, which is why I never bothered. Turns Not out... Much. Oh, well, that's kind of a disappointing thing for killing I could go. Nemesis. For the freedom of Hoedlin. Yeah, yeah, That one seemed to work. We're almost done. Let's go, my friend. Wait, he has two stones. You are a foolish child. Tough talk from the guy who's lived too long. Allow me to fix that. walls between us to reach out our hands in friendship so we can open our true hearts to one another that's how we win got his arm. Awesome. That is a nice power of friendship win there. Mm -hmm. Trick shot into the air. Future historians will refer to this day as the new dawn of Fodlan. Of that, I have no doubt. It's up to you now, Teach. As for my path...
Okay, why don't you make a separate save? Yeah. God, they do not give me enough save slots. I mean, honestly, I'm just going to save over this one. Because mm -hmm. the separate saves are these. They're a couple months back, but like, if I want to do anything, it'll just be that one. Mm -hmm. A rising flame was alight as the flow of time carved a new history for Fodlan. The ambitions of the fell king Nemesis were crushed, averting what could have been the greatest crisis in the history of Fodlan. After five and a half years of war, a new age was set to begin. Country, faith, history, all that had once formed the order of the world was wiped clean. The heroes whose very hand saved Fodlan from a dark fate commenced with the building of a new society. The leaders of this new, unified Fodlan began their walk down a seemingly endless path. One towards a world that would cherish differences in race and belief. One where all life would be valued equally. Those leaders clung to the hope that their path would not end with Fodlan, that it would someday span the seas to Dagda and beyond the throat to Almira. Tell me, what is it you were actually trying to say? I told you already. I want your asparagus. <laughs> gonna be your, at your side forever. You cannot possibly be serious. How can this be true? You are sincerely saying that the progenitor god Sothis dwells within you? And that you have inherited her power? That is utterly... bizarre. But it's the truth. If I may be so bold, do you consider yourself male or female? I have only ever heard <laughs> you referred to as a male, but Sothis is most Shut assuredly up, Professor female. Oak. Am I to believe that you are a male goddess? I am not certain how much sense that makes. I suppose there are circumstances by which such a thing is possible. I never said I was a goddess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you not? But if you have inherited her power, then surely the two of you have become one. Ugh, it all makes my head spin. I suppose I will take your word for it. <laughs> this is <laughs> weird. I mean, it is confusing. These are questions we want to ask ourselves. I appreciate Flayne for this. <laughs> Flayne, I want you to have this. This is a ring. Oh my, it is beautiful. So delicate and feminine. Is this your ring? So then you walk around with a woman's ring. Surely this is proof that... You're missing the point. <laughs> I really, I'm really disappointed we don't have Sedith in the background just like slowly scooting in and just in. like death glaring us. What do you intend to do with my daughter? <clears throat> Anyway. Am I? Oh, oh wait! Now I recall. I have heard that it is customary to bestow a ring upon the person one wishes to marry. Which would mean... Hmm. Does this mean what I think it means? Will you marry me, Flame? Or the fish? Fish? Me? You? Us? You mean to tell me that you have fallen in love with me? I love you dearly. <laughs> we I love you dearly. I think I might faint. I... No one has ever... Well, uh, of course they have not. Oh, my apologies. I am quite taken aback. Are you most certain I am the one whom you love? I always knew there was a deep, special bond between us. I never quite imagined that it might develop into this. Or 
Perhaps I did imagine it. Often. I must ask once more. Are you certain that you are not the goddess Sothis? I'm not, really. Oh, this is all so surreal. I graciously accept your proposal and this beautiful ring. Your heart is as vast as the ocean. I ask that you wrap me in your embrace. For now, and for all eternity. As a weird face. <laughs> So we don't get to see her floof dragon form. I am disappointed. Ah. Battle data. Oh, I see. So every battle. I almost forgot what he looked like with teal hair. I know. Weird, huh? I miss it. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have been totally fine with the really bright green hair if it was glowing. And we had, like, these sparkly lights coming off of it. Like, how rad would that have been if we were straight up radiant? Let's see, does he know who Flane actually is? No, he still doesn't! Oh, Manuela left Garrig Mach to build her own academy in a small, war-torn town. There she contributed heavily to rebuilding efforts while teaching future generations the necessary skills of survival. Though she never married or had children of her own, she spent the last years of her life happily devoted to her students. Annette, the bloomed overachiever. Annette returned to her hometown of Herdiad, where she took up teaching position at the Royal School of Sorcery. She was a gifted instructor, and many of her students went on to become world-renowned sages. Though her talent for teaching was remarkable in its own right, she was perhaps best remembered for effortle effortlessly securing the trust and respect of her many students, as well as inspiring all who knew her by living a life of kindness, cheer, and humility. Linhart, the Sleepy Crest Scholar Linhart abandoned his inherited position in favor of a carefree life at Garrig Mach Monastery. There he spent his days at ease, whiling away the hours at the fishing pond for his, or in his private study. After his passing, a treasure trove of documents was unearthed, revealing the key discoveries that he made during his many years of crest research. Shamir, the distant archer. Shortly after the war, Shamir gave up the mercenary life and disappeared. Though she was never heard from again, rumors swirled persistently for years of a master archer turned thief who lined her pockets by shaking down all of those who preyed upon the innocent. Father Christology, Hanneman. Though Fodlin had changed, Hanneman's goal remained unwavering, to determine the workings of the Cress and to do away with the inequality caused by them. To that end, his research resulted in magical tools that could be used to eventually, um, used even without the aid of crests. This proved to be yet another worthwhile discovery by the father of Christology. Limitless Potential, Cyril. Unable to serve Rey any longer, Cyril nearly left the church. He was persuaded to stay, however, to assist in rebuilding the monastery that he had helped maintain. Thanks to his devoted work ethic, the Officers' Academy was able to reopen a few years later. When the new students took up to the reception hall, Cyril found himself among them. Eloise, Son of the Knights Once all the fighting had come to an end, Eloise officially took up the position of Captain of the Knights of Saros. In this capacity, he was much beloved, and the Knights became more unified than ever under his command. It was said that their accomplishments during his tenure were beyond even that what Gerald's troops have achieved. Really? Even above Gerald's troops? And I always almost say Gerald rather than Gerald. Eh. Ingrid, the stalwart knight. When Galatea territory was seized, Ingrid argued strongly for the preservation of its borders. Her request was granted, and she was appointed to rule. From her new position, she gave her she gave her all to ensure that the people of Galatea 
lived peaceful lives and put years of hard work into reforming its farming practices. Her efforts bore fruit, and to the people's delight, oh, to the people's delight, and Galatea became a land of plenty. Interesting, so farming. Caspar, the roaming instigator. Well, he did instigate quite a number of fights. Yep. After the war, Caspar set out alone on a journey of self-discovery. He traveled to every corner of Fodlin, and even ventured abroad now and again. It is said that he got into mischief at every turn, but that the victims of his antics, always more amused um, than harmed or offended, remembered him fondly and passed those stories on to future generations. Got lots of solo endings here. Yeah, yeah. we gave up. Mercedes, benevolent soul. Mercedes left home and went to Garrett Mock, where she became a model cleric. She devoted the whole of her life to the service of the goddess and became well-beloved by the people, who revered her for her piety and for her boundless generosity toward those in need. Catherine, the Free Knight. Catherine left the Knights of Saros and set out to travel across Fodlin. With Thunderbrand in hand, she wandered the countryside, seeking always to defend the innocent and punish the wicked. Her many years of heroics ensured that she would always be remembered by the people as a beloved folk hero. At the same time, the solo endings aren't bad. Mm. They're just not like, we oh, got... they had babies. So, so we had to get to A+, plus and then probably also at the top of the like list with yeah. Catherine. There's, there's probably a number of stipulations. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Ferdinand, noblest of nobles. After reclaiming the title of Duke Heir, is it Ager? Ager? Ayer? I think Ayer? They, they always said Ayer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm Ferdinand von Ayer. <laughs> Ferdinand set out reforming his territory. He overcame numerous obstacles to help the lands of Ayer recover. And in recognition of those achievements, he was invited to take part in helping to govern all of Fodlin. Petra, Queen of Bridget. Petra returned to her homeland of Bridget and inherited the throne from her grandfather. As ruler, she declared independence from Fodlin and worked tirelessly to secure friendly relations with both Fodlin and Dagda. Her efforts inspired her descendants to carry the torch she lit, ensuring future of peace and prosperity for her people. Noble of the Red Rose, Lorenz. Soon after the war, Lorenz assumed leadership over House Gloucester and helped govern Fodlin as a representative of the Old Alliance Lords, his political talent yielded revolutionary policy changes, many of which were of particular benefit to the common folk. Worldly artist, Ignatz. After returning home, Ignatz persuaded his family that he should become a painter. He traveled all through Fodlin and beyond, painting beautiful landscapes and captivating portraits of the world's cultures. His unique style set the artistic paradigm for a generation. Heir of Purpose, Sedith. Sedith remained at the monastery and worked to restore the authority of the Church of Saros. Doing away with all his old strictness, he adopted a tolerant stance toward all. His encouragement of believers to respect those of other faiths helped the people of Fodlin to find common ground with others. Bernadetta, the Eternal Loner. As soon as Bernadetta inherited House Varley from her father, she withdrew from all political discourse and focused solely on the management of her own territory. Because of this and her penchant for spending long periods of time in hibernation, she became known throughout the house's history as the Bear of Varley. Arrow of Justice, Ash. After the war, Ash was formally knighted and appointed the new head of House Gaspard, which had no successors. His warm, sincere attitude toward his subjects was praised all over Fodlin, and Ash was finally recognized as the ideal knight he'd always hoped to be. His deeds live on in countless tales. Mandarin Sword, Felix. Even after the war's end, skirmishes continued to break out across Fodlin. Bored and restless in his capacity as Duke Feraldarius, Felix abandoned his title, jumping at the opportunity to wield a sword again. Little is known of his whereabouts thereafter, but even many years later, soldiers continued to whisper rumors of a mysterious man able to deal swift deaths to scores of enemies. Oh, there we go. 
Is this a pairing? Or? Yeah, this is a paired ending. Oh. We never really got to see their A conversation, did we? Yeah, we did. We did? Yeah. That was that was them just talk he was saying like even if you're old. Oh, even if you're old I'll be with you. Oh, okay. Devoted heart Dorothea and sincerest of nights Sylvain. After more than ten proposals, Dorothea finally relented and agreed to marry Sylvain. Together, they inherited Gautier territory. With the support of his wife's council, the new Margrave Gautier was able to improve relations with the Serang people and thereby convince the local nobles that relics and crests were no longer an absolute requirement for survival. Due to their efforts, they went down in history as an extraordinary lord and lady. It is said that they finally convinced Dorothea to marry- what? Oh, sorry. What it is said that finally convinced Dorothea to marry Sylvain was his promise that they should grow hap old happily together and that he was true to his word. Oh. Yep. Oh. Huh. Growing old together. Huh. Was not expecting this. Wait, they ended up together? Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Marianne, survivor of the curse, and Hilda, free spirit. After returning to their respective homes, Hilda and Marianne stayed in touch and deepened their friendship through letters. Hilda informed Marianne that her passion for crafting fashionable accessories had given her the idea to start an artisan academy. And in response, Marianne pledged the financial support of the house mark. What? No. Wander. Stop. I didn't press anything. It just kept going. Like. But there was, there's an X. That's apparently when I press A, I have to skip the text crawl. To get it to stop. <laughs> that was shitty and stupid. No! Alright. Well. Well. This is not what I expected. Was No! This, was this all because of the final battles? I have no idea. It should have been, this but... Is, this is confusing. She didn't die. Well, maybe it's because she got enough of a... In any case. So, as far as we know... Hilda and Marianne started making accessories. Okay. In any case, the Beast of Lester, Raphael, and Scholar of Misfortune, Lysithia. Raphael returned to his hometown to serve his liege lord as a knight and spent his spare time helping out at the inn that his family had opened during his time away. Due to his grandfather's age, he was compelled before long to give up knighthood and manage the inn full time. Soon after that, the inn began to be frequented by Lysithia and her family, who had renounced all claim to nobility and begun a life as commoners. Lysithia found a kindred spirit in Raphael's sister, Maya, and before long, found herself helping out around the place too. Eventually, she was put in charge of the kitchen, where it is said that she spent the rest of her days happily working. Wait, so she they did nothing really happen between them except she became the there were, cook? She, yeah, she just became Raphael's cook. <laughs> she just became Raphael's cook? <laughs> well What is this? I mean it is like five thirty in the morning, so everybody's probably Mm-hmm. Well in any case, this is the only thing that we thought would come to fruition that actually did come about. Yeah. I don't what the RNG we had, we, is dumb. We had thought that Hilda was gonna end up with Raphael. With Raphael, and that... Yeah. Well, whatever. Okay. I give up. We have Claude, the King of Unification, and Leone, the Blade Breaker 2. Or, wait, <laughs> She's the second? The second? Yeah. Okay. Blade Breaker the second. Uh, why, was Geralt the Blade Breaker? Yeah. Of course. Of course. Leone returned to Sawing Village to repay her debts and mysteriously vanished afterwards. Some years later, when trade between Fodlin and Elmira began in earnest, the village received notice that the Elmiran king would be passing through on his way to Garrig Mach. The village rushed to repair themselves, and when the anticipated day arrived, they were shocked to find Leone at the king's side. She had gone to visit Claude and Elmira, and ended up staying to become his queen. Faced with the sight of Leone in the resplendent clothing of a monarch, her father and the other villagers could do nothing but stand in mute <laughs> amazement. Okay, that's a pretty dang good ending. I like that. X. <laughs> 999 battles. I didn't even plan that. Ruler of Dawn. 
and Flame, the Slumbering Princess. Oh, really? I suppose she was considered the Slumbering Princess. All right. X announced his marriage to Flame shortly after becoming leader of the United Kingdom of Fodland. Wait, so Claude decided to return back to Elmira and rule there, and you were made king? I guess so. Okay. Flame did not get involved in government affairs, but instead focused on making frequent public appearances where her calm and pleasant demeanor helped endear the new leaders to the people. When Fodlin was finally restored, the couple left the throne to their children and retired for a royal villa on the Rhodos coast of western Fodlin, where they fished forever. Yeah, there they go. They spent their remaining years there in peace, fishing a great deal. It is said that no matter their age, they always retained a youthful appearance. That's a cute ending. Fishing forever. Some say they're still there fishing. We're free! Sort of. <sighs> I can't... For people to get all of the pairings that they actually wanted, I couldn't imagine the work it, required. Yeah. The sheer work and effort and time. Because and... those last couple battles probably tilted things in favor of other characters. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is in English. Yeah. Oh, right, you haven't been listening to the soundtrack on your own. No, I didn't know that the Fire Emblem theme song had a song. It's for this one. It's new. It's catchy. It's good. Well, then. We're at the end. And it's probably four or five o'clock in the morning, but we, we pushed through, right? Oh, you can guarantee three pairings by putting them as adjuncts? Is it because I had Marianne as an adjunct for that final battle? Yes, Hilda? you did. You did. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, well. Wait, but no. Oh. I mean, they had already been at A, so that was enough to push her over the edge. I, Probably. I guess? But, like, she'd been fighting with Raphael constant. I don't know. That's goofy. The pairings and even the support conversations are kind of secondary for me in these games. They're fun, but now, it's just like, eh. Did Rhea die off screen? Yeah. Okay. I didn't even see a funeral or anything for her. I mean, she might have survived, but she said she didn't have much time left. And then it's like, oh, Nemesis is coming. And she's like, well, guess I'd just die off camera. They did that a lot in this game. Well then, this hmm. is, I, the story kept me guessing. I mean, there were inklings of what and people were and how, but nothing ever really became clear yeah. until the I bitter end. Part of it is, is because it did play kind of like a cliff notes of a JRPG spread out with a lot of character building. Like, you know, they had the those that slither in the dark, but they only popped up four times total? Five times total? I really wish that they had helped character build the villains just a little bit And the more. other leaders. And the other leading leaders. Leading up to the, the war. I felt bad that we never really got to know Dimitri or Adelgard yeah. much at all. And I suppose that's what the other playthroughs are for. But like, but... it would have been nice if we got to know them as as a villain. Mm -hmm. Or as a rival. Yeah. As opposed to like, the person, um, you know, the, the person that, that you're leading. It's like, I think it would have been so much more interesting and engaging if there had been constantly like dialogue back and forth, like, the actual houses were rivals. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, like, yeah, they get mad at you for poaching their student, uh, their their classmates. Or, like, there's more of a m way more dialogue and cutscene uh, leading up to, like, the, the Battle of the Eagle and Lion and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. 
What I do have to say, what I liked most about this game is I did not expect them to create so many fleshed out characters. Yeah. Some more than others. Yeah. But we definitely had. I, I thought off the bat that I wouldn't be interested in over half of them, but in the end, they each were fairly unique and and were their own characters, and I like that they weren't all tropes and. Yeah. Even the tropey characters were good. I think I was a little bit disappointed with Sylvain specifically that one of the female characters wasn't actually just trying to pursue him for his crest. Mm -hmm. Like, actually boldface, because it was all just like random, just like cardboard stand-in women, and I think it actually would have been kind of neat if one of the girls was shallow enough to pursue him for his crest. But all of the girls were well-written and, you know, clearly had their own motivations that wasn't just like, must crest. Mm-hmm. That too. And uh, I, the one criticism that I have regarding the gameplay is just how cyclical it is. It was very padded out. I'm glad by the second half you really could just start skipping things if you wanted to and probably be fine. At the same time, you really do miss out on a lot of content as a result. I wish that they had actually taken the micromanagement and like really condensed that down into like you, once per month you change a character's like lesson plan and direction and stuff and maybe you get uh one point per professor level uh to like specifically boost you know you just pick some characters and they get a higher exp boost and then that's it for the month there also seem to be so many different systems Mm -hmm. for gaining experience in one thing or another yeah, actually now that i'm thinking about it i almost kind of wish each month had boiled down to one exploration phase. Well, no. I don't know. They're, uh, essentially, you're too spoiled for choice, and in the end, it didn't feel like those choices really mattered much. Yeah, kinda. But it allows you to get more stats here and there, and yeah. you're able to grind up some fairly powerful characters. But at that point, the game doesn't become challenging? No. And honestly, I never played this game for for the challenge. I could have, but I knew for an 80 plus hour game, mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be harder than it already was because any amount of actual difficulty was going to slow it down. And I didn't want to do it. It didn't help that you went full ham on recruiting. Yeah. At yeah. the same time, it did let us actually get to know all of the characters in one playthrough. As opposed to having to be like, well, we killed this character. They seem neat. We probably would have killed the majority of them at that battle, the three-way battle between yeah. Dimitri, Edelgard, and our own faction. Probably. And I'm glad that we did go along with uh, with the Golden Deer. Yeah. Uh, especially because they're the only ones that actually go after those that slither in the dark. I can't imagine what the other factions would have done having not... Like, yeah, does it just end? Do you get, like, a good ending? And then it's just like, but what about these villains? Where like, did they go? I would have been actually kind of pissed if mm -hmm. we had chosen Blue Lions or, or you know, Black Eagles. Gotten to the end, and it's like, but what about Solon? Who is the Thales? Well, actually, in probably the Edelgard bad ending, wouldn't she have just outright killed the dragon people? And that would have... and then Well, you get rid of all crests in the Edelgard... Probably. ending which is actually also good yeah i mean that's what hanneman was working on eventually yeah to give or take away crests and realistically the crests were starting to fade on their own too just from mm -hmm. the blood thinning so eventually the crests would fade from the earth and it wouldn't matter anymore but realistically yep. those weapons having been forged from the corpses of dragons yeah. Let's see. So, any plan for this game's DLC? Uh, for the DLC? Yeah, so, well... Is it a post-game DLC, or...? A it varies a bit. So, I don't think there's post-game. So, there's... I think there's a couple of DLC that are coming out. They might be... They might have some, like, bonus mission packs or something. I have the season pass. Um, but... At the end of the year, they're going to be adding new story content, which I can only imagine is Route 5. I'll have to see exactly 
what's required? Depending on what you are able to attain with the new game plus, it, I mean, depending on how varied the story is from the time skip onwards, yeah. I could only imagine that it would still be entertaining to play through. Though you would probably have to skip through most yeah. of the the training and most of the yeah. So what I side I, banter. What I would probably do is I might play through a new game plus maybe. Like the problem is I can't justify playing this three more times. Even though I'd do it a lot faster, because I'd more or less just, like, no holds barred, turbo grind out a bunch of levels, punch my way through every mission, honestly on auto? Probably not deal too heavily in the player relation, well, the character relationships. No. You know, if I wanted to do that sort of thing, I'd probably do it at the end of another playthrough where I've just recruited a bunch of people, or even go back to the one that I just finished. And effectively just auto battle everybody as adjuncts with each other, adjutants, sorry. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, just max it out. The problem is just like, I have other things that I want to do. And so it's like, truly, I don't care enough about the support conversations to not just go watch them on somebody else's channel. And I do apologize for the many hours that we spent. Yeah, because <laughs> on, well, on support I think it was conversations worth it. in a row, I, I can understand having a couple. You kind of had to though. There, I wish but... it was interspersed. I, honestly, I wish it was like the old ones where you could only do support conversations in the middle of a battle, oh. and it was just a short little like back and forth, like you know, a couple of lines, mm -hmm. and that was it. Like I would like to see uh, intelligence systems go back and make a more traditional Fire Emblem, like totally linear, no side content. Maybe two difficulty levels, if only one's just no permadeath, and that's it. And, yeah, just straight story, smaller cast, and so on and so forth. But with this level of quality, because I think I'd really enjoy that. At the same time, I really did enjoy what they did with the... Oh, the end. With the monastery and with the school setting and no, it was a, and... it was a great idea and a great execution. And if they did another one of these and finely tuned it and like streamlined it, it would also be really good. I think my true enduring criticism though is the environment sucked and the level design was boring up until like the end. Mm -hmm. Like once we started attacking the empire, it got pretty good. But at the same time, like I would like to see more things that were like downright gorgeous. Oh well. Anyway, so save cleared data can be used to start a new game plus. If you intend to play your previous data, save save cleared. Yeah, this is fine. I don't know. It's just after so long. Oh well, yeah, and she's on the, the throne again. again. Yep. yep. But yeah, it's, it's just after so long, it's one of those where I don't know if I have the uh, the time or the energy to start a new game plus run again. I might if people, like, really demand it. I'll have to see how, like, the views on YouTube go. But, like, let me check continue for a second. That took us almost 90 hours. If I was doing that at my usual 30-minute episode pace... Granted, would you say about 5 to 10 hours of that was needless grinding? Uh, yeah. About, about 10. So, like, you know, cut that down. Let's say about 80 maybe, hours. Maybe another 10 hours was spent fine-tuning characters and having yeah. all those conversations but even then, and other things. Even then, like, if I were to do a new game, that'd plus, be that 60 more. hours. Yeah, and a lot of that would be, like, hard to cut out and so on and so forth. Um, but my point is, like, this was, this was almost as long as Persona 5, which actually is kind of nice, because this did everything that I enjoyed about Persona 5 without any of the shitty fiddly bits. Um, like, I liked this formula so much more, and it was very engaging. But the other thing I would say is I do wish there were more cutscenes of the characters just hanging out and doing things as a group. Because, like, before and after missions, sometimes they'd all stand around and say things, but they weren't actually interacting. Because it had to account for all the characters, whether or not they were alive or dead. I actually think Judith was hamstringed in there just in case you had killed everyone off. Probably, yeah, just so they'd react. 
And it's like, I don't know. I, I wish there were support conversations that involved three or four people at a time. Just for funsies. Mm -hmm. Just so you could see, like, yeah, what do they do together as, like, a group? Because it's all it's... It's everybody seems weirdly antisocial. They only hang out in pairs, and that's it. Except for when they're murdering like whole whole armies, then they then they're together as a group, as the battle cube. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. But it's also almost six a.m., and we really should be getting to bed. We should have, you know, cut this up into two sessions. But instead, now we are free, free to go to bed, and not have this rule our life. I'm really glad that we ended up going along with the whole fish. Yeah. Just I mean, making X persistently obsessed with fishing and such. Of course. Was... I mean, we caught stupid amounts of fish. And it was cute. <laughs> and I loved it. So, thank you everyone for watching and good night.